everyone, I am Stephanie and in today's video I'm going to show you the process of my latest sculpture, Rainbow Mushrooms. And I made these on a plastic bottle and this specific sculpture has been done for Game of Shrooms, which is an annual event, an art event, where artists all around the world make mushroom related art and share it locally, they hide it somewhere and then people can find the artworks and keep them. So this year's event is held on June 11th so you can still join if you'd like. There is a map on Ata Boys, so the organizers website, which I'm going to link below. So if you're somewhere in an English speaking country, there's a high chance that somewhere near you, there's going to be mushroom art hidden to be found and kept. So I really would encourage you to check it out. And if you're an artist yourself, or if you're a hobby artist, it do you don't have to be professional or anything, you can join and make mushroom related art for others to find and keep. The only rule, and that is really important, is that if your artwork is not found within the day, then you have to take it back because we do not want to litter anything. So no littering, uh, it, it's not trash. So if nobody finds it, just take it back home. So that's the only important rule, I would say. And yeah, it's a really fun event. It's my third year participating. I always love working on mushroom related art and yeah, it's it's just good fun, to be honest. For this sculpture, I decided to go on a rainbow color scheme on a very white plastic bottle. Now, if you've known my work for a while, you do know I love working on trash. At the core of my work is about overconsumption and the impact of our society on the environment and I just want to question our habits through my work and this is why I really like working with trash. Now I haven't worked on trash for a while now because I'm currently working a lot on books so for me it was really fun. Like this sculpture is total comfort zone for me so mushrooms, rainbow, trash, it was such fun to make. I really enjoyed it. It, it took a bit of time. You don't need to, if you want to join, you don't have to make something as complex as a sculpture. It can be a doodle, it doesn't have to be a complex artwork. It's it's really a fun event and the idea is to kind of relax and just have fun, you know, with art. I feel like as professional artists we do tend to get very serious about everything and this is just a good way to unwind and to enjoy the process. And in any case, I would like to talk a bit about the process and the technique of this one. Now, I have made mushroom tutorials on my YouTube channel, which I find are probably better than what I did here. I am a professional artist and I have a lot of different clays at home and so I use a lot of different clays in my own work. But if I had to explain to someone new how to make mushrooms, I would not show it how I did it in this video. So I'm going to tell you because I know you are curious. I've shared a reel on Instagram and everyone is asking questions, so I'm going to explain it. But be in mind, this is not how I would teach how to make mushrooms. It's just how I happened to decide to make them on this specific sculpture. I also tend to change my mind all the time with clays and which ones to use and what to do and how to approach sculpting. So my work is generally not really set in specific techniques. It evolves all the time and um, yeah, okay. <laughs> that was a long introduction, but I just wanted to yeah, say that because often people think there's like one specific magical clay that can, um, <laughs> you know, do everything. It's not like that. Technically, you can use any clay to make mushrooms. It's more a question of preference of availability and um, mostly preferences, to be honest. How I made these mushrooms? I started by doing the caps, some of the caps, so the amanitas, I made the caps with polymer clay. And it's kind of funny because I haven't used polymer clay in a year, maybe two, so why I decided to do it that way, I'm not sure myself, but I decided to make the caps in polymer clay and to make a cast from them. That's the blue little mold you see at the beginning of the video, around 
one minute. Those are cast from the mushroom cups in polymer clay. So the polymer clay was the first clay you saw, the flesh looking one, and it happens to be Sculpey. Not because I love Sculpey, it's just because I had that at home, so I used that. So I made molds cast out of them, and then I used cold porcelain to make the cups. Why cold porcelain? Uh, because I happen to have a lot of at home right now and one brand specifically that I don't really like because I think it's not flexible enough and normally in my work I use cold porcelain for flexibility so this one I'm just you know trying to use it up because I obviously don't want to throw it away so that's the main reason why I did it that way <laughs> Um, and also it's going to be faster for me to make more mushrooms if I need them. Sculpting is a long process and so when you can ease up the process a little bit and make it a bit faster then that's useful. That's why I made molds out of the caps for the manitas. So that was one thing. Now the other caps, it's the second caps you saw in the video. And yes, I could have timed my voice over with that, but that was just too much trouble. <laughs> um, so the second caps, those were air dry clay. I'm still kind of testing out air dry clays, so I'm using a lot of different brands and I cannot say I have favorites. So far I kind of like them all. However, air dry clay is not flexible, so you cannot use it for everything. So I made those and those were not casted. I just, you know, sculpted around aluminium foil and then, you know, let it dry. And then I didn't record that because I forgot. But once the cap were done, I added, um, I also made the stems. So all the stems were made with cold porcelain. That's for flexibility and, and strength. And um, I would always make stems from now on with cold porcelain. Anything that is thinner, I, I really would choose that. And then I just added the stem to the cups using air dry clay because that's just easier to sculpt. Let everything dry and then painted them with acrylics. I used mostly acrylic gouache. And the last part is the tiny rainbow tentacles. It's all cold porcelain. I used Modena clay, which is really nice. It's my favorite cold porcelain because it's flexible. And I simply colored it with um, acrylics. In, I mix acrylic paint in the clay and uh, yeah that's pretty much it and I attached everything with cold porcelain to the bottle and some acid-free white glue. So now you know everything. Does that mean that you need to do the same? I would say no. If anything I would encourage you to go your own path and find y your own vision as an artist and your own expression. Uh, but maybe, you know, uh, a bit of these techniques might open up possibilities for you. And uh, that, I think, kind of wraps up that video. It was a rather short one and in the end I had a lot to say. So I hope this was sort of useful for you, that it was enjoyable to watch. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much for staying with me until the end. If you've stayed until the end please leave a rainbow emoji in the comments section so i can know that some people are actually making it to the end and yeah i wish you a lovely day i really hope you're going to have a lovely day week weekend whenever you're watching this and i hope to see you in my next video bye mm -hmm.